to help improve your experience with huge mod packs on shitty computers or even mediocre computers that are just really huge mod packs. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to talk about Minecraft mod packs, whether it's going to be uh, in Minecraft launcher or in Technic, and this also applies to FTB or AL or any launcher. Even if you're just playing normal Minecraft and you often experience not responding and you're having a hard time trying to get like things to load, or if you just generally want to improve uh, your computer's performance with Minecraft in general, these are some really great tips that you're going to want to set up on your computer and you're going to want to implement uh, right away. The first things first, and this sounds a little bit redundant, but the, whenever you're about to play a mod pack, especially a large one or any one that your computer just seems to have a hard time handling, always restart your computer first. If your computer has been on for like half an hour or so, it depends what you've been doing. If you played another game, restart your computer. Even if you just browsed a bunch of videos on YouTube, restart your computer, especially that. Um, and this way you'll automatically get the best uh, RAM available. Now let me show you what I'm talking about here. If I go to Task Manager, and uh, that was just right click on the empty, you could also control Alt Delete or whatever you would like to do. And if for some other reason it looks like this, double click on a white spot and go to Performances. And down here you'll see Available and Free. Uh, if your Available is severely low, then you're really in trouble. But I like to follow the Free since it's usually lower and you don't want to see that as zero either. Now if it's Windows 8, uh, it's a little bit different but it still does have these numbers in such a way but you have to click on the memory bit and then you go into those details down at the bottom. If you're not sure how much RAM you do have, go to right click here, uh, you know, computer, and go to properties, and then it'll be displayed right here. So I have 16, you see installed memory RAM as well. You know, you wanna be able to use these tools uh, to gauge when you're ready to play these big mod packs. And if you're not, then restart your computer. If these numbers are bad, restart. You wanna have at least two to 3,000 free RAM here. That's like the minimum for big, big mod packs. And you could do that with four gigabytes or at least get very close to, but you're going to have to follow these tips. Next bit here is Windows key and R. Okay, that's going to open up your run. If you're on like, you know, you could probably Windows and search, right? Same thing. Now in here, type in msconfig, all one word, just like that. Hit enter. Might take a moment for your computer to load. But what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the services tab and click hide all Microsoft services down here at the bottom. Now, sometimes it's worth it to go in between like these labels up here at the top and expanding them just to make sure that you could see everything that it is because you don't want to disable something important. All right, so Intel stuff you're probably going to want to keep. Apple mobile device takeoff. If you have Bonjour or iPod or iTunes, uh, take all those off. Here's my Bonjour. Now, here's a big one a lot of people do, and it's really, really bad. Uh, take off Steam. When you want to play a Steam game, load Steam then. But if you want to play Minecraft, then Steam is going to waste at least 500 megabytes, sometimes a little bit less, just give or take, of your free RAM when it's loaded, even if you're not playing a game. So unless like it's like your lifeline for talking to people, like just get rid of it if you need this help. So another thing you disable is certain devices, like multimedia devices, because when you plug them in, it'll still turn on those these services. They're not gone forever. They just won't turn on when your computer is being turned on. But they still do have automatic procedures for turning on when you plug in the device or when you load up the program associated with these things. Now, if you're using Hamachi, never shut that off because when you shut off Hamachi, it forces like a failed engine thing and you have to reload it. And you don't you want to prevent that. So Hamachi, if you're using that for a server, you're gonna to want to keep both LMI Guardian services and Hamachi. Um, and then the only other things you want to keep on is anything to do with Nvidia or an Intel or maybe Microsoft or if you know what it is and you need it on. Anything else that you don't recognize, if you're not certain, take your time, Google these things and find out what they are. And it's worth the time to learn all that. So next thing you go in the startup and it's pretty much the same thing. Here you're really going to want to expand this because they're short. And another good thing to look at is location. If you're not sure, take a look at the location and, and if it's installed in like the Windows folder or this software folder, well here I'm seeing this as uh, you know, Windows Windows right here, right? So that's probably important. iTunes, you take this off. Uh, any Google update services or Adobe update services or anything update services, uh, like Curse in this case, I shut off here. Like it could be, uh, you know, TeamSpeak. 
you know, Ventrilo or even your Skype, if you feel you really need to. Honestly, Skype is a big one. And unless you need to use it to talk to your friends when you're playing, you could shut that off for single player or just joining a server involving that type of communication requirement. So and I have iTunes here, so I'm going to shut that off. Or if you're Windows 8, once again, you'll notice that when you did MS Config, the startup tab is actually done in your task manager and you have to go through things and disable them. And it's still worth it to do that for absolutely everything you don't need. Whenever you're all done, hit apply and then OK and exit without restart because we're not done yet. There's still one important step. Now for the next step you're going to go back to your computer again and right click and go to properties and then we're going to go down to this advanced system settings right. Okay so we're going to click on that. Now if that's Windows 8 this will be the same once you get to this box here. But to get here on Windows 8, you're going to hit your Windows key and immediately don't go even go to the search bar, but just hit your Windows key and immediately start typing in system. And you're going to click the system that kind of looks like this blue computer right here. It's a blue 3D computer with a blue screen, right? And that should open up this, which is what it is. And then from here, advanced system settings. From that point on, it's the same. Now, here in the system properties, we're going to go to the, we're already in the right tab, but we're going to click under performance settings and then we're going to go to the advanced tab and then we're going to hit change so what you're going to do is de-check this checkbox by default it looks like this get rid of that make sure you're on the c drive you could do this on other drives too but start with the c drive hit custom size and then in the initial size you're going to replace that with whatever is in recommended now if the recommended is lower than your ram like i was mentioning before what you're going to do is take whatever your ram is and add 50 percent to it so if your ram is four it becomes six thousand Okay, and if your RAM's 8, it'll become 12. Okay? And then for the maximum size, I think it's like two times your RAM or something of the sort. So I might have a little bit too much here, but just do about 200 to two, somewhere between 200%, 205% of your RAM. I can't remember the, the solid number anymore. I, I figured it out one time, but whatever. And make sure you hit that set button. Hit the set button. Okay, then you're going to hit OK, 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 OK. Now, at this point, if you're ready to play, you could be done with just these things and restart your computer. And then first things first, when you come, when your computer is back up, come back to the task manager, just right click start task manager and go back to your performance and see once again that free RAM. When you restart your computer, you want to see it higher than whatever it was the first time you looked at the beginning of the video, which you should have done, right? And see, the, see that comparison, okay? Now that number that's there for free, when I set my Minecraft, like if I have my launcher here open, and I go to edit profile and I go to JVM arguments, decheck, or you're going to decheck it or check it, sorry. And this XMX, it'll probably say 1G if it's default. You could change that up until about whatever your free is. So if you're seeing like 2,400, two is at least a good start. If you set it three, it should still run. And if it doesn't run, you don't have the right version of Java. And we're going to talk about that next. Java version 8 right now is actually incompatible with Forge mods. Very important. There is a bug or it's breaking Forge itself, so your big mod packs won't work at all anymore getting this version. In the end, uh, previously I used to recommend going to CL Java Downloads. Um, but nonetheless, I'm going to actually now recommend ignoring this altogether. This is the same site, but it's a direct link right to a, a different page with an older version of Java that is good for all your mod packs and all your forges and everything going on. So what you're going to do is hit accept license, and then you're going to come down to Windows. 86 is only when you have like two or less gigabytes of RAM on your computer. So if that's the case, then you're probably good with just this 86, but don't expect running huge mod packs. If you have more than that, you need the 64. You don't even need to get the 86, but whatever. Get the, get the 64, get that downloaded, get that installed, and then go ahead and restart your computer and try everything again. Definitely look into getting Optifine. So look for the downloads and go find the one you need. You can get, you could try Ultra, you could try Standard, try whichever one, see what work. And... Sometimes, I think nowadays, you, all you literally need to do is install your Forge and then put the Optifine in the mod pack and it runs. There was a time where you would have to actually go to the launcher and go to an edit profile in older version. But if you're running 1.710, I do believe. And if it's not working when you drop it into the Optifine, someone else already did this. For, so for now, I'll direct you to that. Just go how to install Forge with, or I guess you could word it this way, it doesn't matter, both keywords are there, with Forge. And then you could be like 1.64, and boom.
that's probably going to teach you how. But once you have Optifine, okay, you're going to go into your options, video settings, and we're going to take one peek at every single thing here. The first thing you want to do, if you're already lagging, the first thing you do is go to animations, hit all off. That right there might just fix your lag, okay? And you, then you'll be able to do the rest a little bit easier. Now, uh, next we'll go into other. And here you could turn on uh, one good thing that whenever you play in full screen mode, you, if you're having still having lag, you could come back here and set this to 1280 by 720 instead of 1980. That helps. Uh, everything else is good just to keep as is. Now, next we'll go into performance. And smooth FPS, you could definitely try on. And you could try off or on, see if it makes a difference. difference. Uh, dynamic updates is kind of good. It makes it so it loads more chunks when you're standing still. Therefore, if you're standing still, there's better FPS and it's a better time to load chunks and it might make it when you're adventuring it's slightly less laggy. So, uh, lazy chunk loading, you can turn on. Fast math, turn on. Fast render, turn on. Chunk updates, is already good at one. Load far. I think you can keep that off, actually. Smooth FPS, like I said. Test with both on and off. See what's better. Um, performance uh, details. All right. So here, what you're going to do is basically turn everything off unless you absolutely just couldn't stand the fact of it being off. And if it doesn't have an off function, set it to fast. So we'll just kind of cycle through that. We can go clouds off or fancy. I, I keep it fancy, but clouds can go off. Trees could go fast. Water could go fast. Sky can go off. Sun and moon can go off. Depth and fog can go off. Translucent blocks, set it to fast. Dropped items, set it to fast. Dropped items, set to fast is extremely important. Default and fancy will be laggier and that will help a bit. Okay, so a held item, tooltips, that can go off, show caves can go off, stars can go off, uh, rain and snow can go off, grass can be fast, and cloud height can be off. Okay, now next we'll go into quality, filtering off, clear water off, better grass off, 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 random mobs off as well, off, and mid map type nearest, okay, everything's just off off and off. This is all general stuff, but, and then clouds can go off, view bobbing, shut that off, and advanced open GL, off is actually slower, set it to fast. Uh, graphics fast, and render distance finally, uh, actually makes max frame rate, set that to unlimited, because I've noticed that when I set mine, it was set to 120 by default, and that actually made it that I just didn't get the best FPS that I can get, and render distance I would recommend like 5, maybe 6 or 7, based on what you could stand, right? But set it lower. Now, on this main menu, you won't get any more than, like, I think it's 30 or 60 or something like that, if you actually have something showing that at that point. But that's only the max for the menus. And, like, the chest screens and stuff, your your, your FPS goes down. And then when you're let out, it goes back to unlimited. So that's going to be it. That's all my tips that I could say to help improve your experience with huge mod packs on shitty computers or even mediocre computers that are just really huge mod packs. Okay, hope that helps. And I'll have more videos to come because the next Next video coming up is going to be how to fix your Tekkit launcher for installing the TPPI. Uh, Tekkit, or what is it, the test pack? Please ignore. That'll be the next bit. I noticed that there's some download problems and all this stuff. We'll get, I'll get to that in no time. I already probably know the fix, and I'll show you how to do that yourself next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace off. No, that's, that's Toby Turner. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.